Hey, welcome back to the channel, where we cut through the noise and bring you straight to the heart of what's really happening in mobile tech. And today, oh boy, we are diving into something massive. The next-gen chip, the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2, is coming fast. And if the leaks are even half true, this thing might just blow your mind. Launching earlier than expected in September, Qualcomm's next big chip might be the future of your next smartphone. But what makes it special? Why is everyone talking about it? Well, that's what we're here to unpack. By the end of this video, you'll understand why the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 isn't just another chip. It might redefine what a phone can do. Maybe even replace your laptop. Yeah, it's that serious. So let's break it down step by step. Stick with me and I promise you'll come away knowing exactly what to expect. Okay. First, the saga of who's building this chip. And wow, it's been a roller coaster. At first, people thought both Samsung and TSMC were making two versions, one using Samsung's advanced 2NM process and one using TSMC's enhanced 3NM N3P node. That sounded like a smart strategy, right? A dual supply chain? But then the story changed. According to Digital Chat Station, Qualcomm dropped the Samsung version. Only the TSMC-made chip, known as the SM8850, would move forward. And it would use TSMC's N3P process. That P, it stands for performance, or plus, a refined version of their standard 3NM node. Better efficiency, more power, same size. But wait, just when we thought it was settled, New whispers say the Samsung version is still being developed. Surprising, right? After all that talk about Samsung's struggles with 2NM chips, it seems that plan might not be dead yet. So what happens if Samsung actually does make this chip? Will it be exclusive to their Galaxy S26? Or will other brands get it too? If true, it hints at a much more complex supply strategy from Qualcomm than we thought. And it could shake up how chips are distributed across different phones in 2025. Now let's crack open the chip itself. And oh man, this is where things get juicy. Snapdragon 8 X Elite 2 brings a major change. It moves to ARM's V9 architecture and adds support for tools like SME2 and SVE2. Now I know, that sounds geeky, but here's the simple version. These are special instructions built inside the chip to supercharge AI, graphics, and machine learning tasks. So your apps, they get faster, smarter, smoother. And Qualcomm's sticking to that familiar 8-core layout. Two prime Orion cores for raw power, and six performance Orion cores for multitasking and efficiency. This will be the third generation of Qualcomm's in-house Orion CPU core. Now, remember that wild leak about the chip hitting 5 gigahertz? Yeah, that raised some eyebrows. But don't worry, that wasn't for real-world use. It was just for testing architecture verification. Kind of like redlining a car engine to see what it can handle before pulling it back for daily use. All right, numbers time. Let's talk benchmarks. Early Geekbench 6 scores suggest the Snapdragon 8X Elite 2 could hit over 4,000 points in single core, and possibly 13,000 in multi-core. We're talking about a 30% leap in raw CPU power. Imagine what that means in real life. Faster AI tools, better AR experiences, maybe even desktop-level apps running on your phone. And Tutu leaks? Even crazier. One leak shows a score of 3.8 million. Compare that to the first Gen 8X Elite at 2.75 million. That's a massive 38% jump in system performance. Okay, gamers, this is for you. The Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 features the new Adreno 840 GPU. Leaks suggest it could deliver 30% better graphics performance than the Adreno 830. How? Bigger GPU cache, 16 megabytes up from 12 megabytes, faster memory support, LPDDR5X, maybe even LPDDR6, and a higher clock speed, 1.35 gigahertz versus 1.1 gigahertz. Translation, smoother gaming, richer graphics, faster rendering, and just better visuals overall. Okay, 
let's be real for a second. All of this power comes at a cost. And the biggest concern, heat and efficiency. Last year's 8 Elite got some complaints, heating up under heavy use. So the big question now is, will the 8 Elite 2 fix that? Can Qualcomm deliver all this speed without frying the phone or draining your battery in two hours? Performance per watt. That's the real test. And let's not forget the other elephant in the room, Apple. The upcoming A19 Pro chip is also just around the corner. If Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 can compete or even match Apple's chip in single core speed and efficiency, then Qualcomm has something huge on their hands. So here we are. We've unpacked the mystery of the manufacturer, dug into the guts of the CPU and GPU, looked at insane benchmark scores, and raised the key question about heat and battery life. This chip could change everything. It could make your next phone your main computer. It could let you do things you never thought a phone could handle. But that brings us to a deeper question. Is peak performance still the most important thing? Or are we now entering a time where balance matters more? Performance and endurance. What do you think? Will the Snapdragon 8 Elite 2 live up to the hype? Or will power-hungry chips turn our phones into mini ovens again? <laughs>